The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. First Week of Podcast coming to you on Monday, August 22nd, 2022. How are you guys doing? Ah, uh, left work a little early today. Uh, my, my throat is very sounds very scratchy because I came with I with a cold actually. Well, I actually am fighting up a cold that I almost could have gotten worse, but I was able to get some rest during the weekend and whatnot. But uh, it's a little a little scratchy here, you know. We just as, as you do in this podcast, no matter what we do, we can continue to roll along and on and on and on, no matter what. But uh, we're back at this little brief hiatus. We are back now. Um, I'm excited to be back here doing doing shows. Um, again, this podcast, find all podcast catchers, Spotify, Stitcher Radios, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, po- Podcast, what does it say, Podcasts, <laughs> Podcasts, Amazon Music, you name it, you find it, Ernest Podcast. Podcasts, um, a lot to talk about today in the show, like I said, you know, came out with a little bit of a slight cold recently, but I'm doing it right now, uh, this one, I actually came home from work early because I, I just, I just kind of feel a little anxious today, honestly. There's, there's moments where, like, once in a while where I'll, you know, where we be at work, at home, whatever, my anxiety kind of gets out of whack. And if you're not feeling, you're not feeling it. And I decided, you know, I asked to leave early and I left early, which was good for me. Obviously, money is <laughs> important, but at the same time, your mental health is even more important because you're not you're no good to, to anybody if you're not able to focus and whatnot. You know, and that's one of the things I think the only negative with my schedule, and I like my schedule, but for the record, you know, in terms of what, what it provides for me to do my things and stuff but there, the, the the one negative about my schedule currently at work is that i don't have any days off together you know i have three days off a week but none of my days off are together you know i have one day on one day off one day on one day off two days on one day off so it's one of those things where like you know sometimes you know i don't you, you, you want some time to recover from the grind and then the next thing you know you turn around and the next day you're back to work you know the day after the day off you're back to work you know even even, even this one additional day off you know, I'm not saying I want four days off, but I'm saying having a day off can actually clean you up a little bit. It can really make you feel fresh and come back, to, you know, come back to work and whatnot. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, like we have this schedule because of our needs. Uh, the schedule, My schedule fits all the needs of my family, for my kids, of course, especially, you know, not having to worry about having a babysitter. You know, it gives us time to for me to do podcasting. It gives us time for me, for my wife to have time with me. We have our own date day now today. On date our own date day now. We have date day Thursdays now. We we've been doing now for the last two weeks now with our kids back in school now. So we have all these things. I have Tuesdays under myself. So on one hand, there's a positive to it, you know, with with the things that can happen with the, with the days off I have and the schedule I do have. But then there's also the negative of like why well, don't have days off together. So sometimes it's okay to leave early one of those days and kinda of sort of attach a half day with the full day off. You know, it is what it is. Um so that's like I said, today I felt a little I anxious and stuff. So I just wanted to uh get out the house a little bit. Get you know, get out the uh gotta work a little bit and just kinda of get some you know, feel fresh, and whatnot. But, you know, yeah, I, I feel I sound kinda of crappy today. <laughs> you know, and it's just one of those things where like, uh yeah, I understand. Um, anyway, so last couple of weeks, you know, prior to hiatus, prior to, you know, coming back last week and whatnot, I discussed with you guys about the future of how I'm going to be handling things with media and whatnot. You know, I discussed to you that, you know, I have a lot of commitments already have for the future. You know, I'm committing to, of course, or obviously my wrestling podcast I do every Thursday. You know, that's something I've been doing for the last two and a half years. That's a commitment that's built in, baked into my schedule. And then uh, I told you guys also that I'm also committing to a second year of doing the Huddle Up podcast with our good friend, Big Jim James Neese, his show. Um, we started doing that last year, myself, Kyle Nash, and others um, did, that, did that show, and we had a great time. And we're going to we're going gonna, we're gonna to live back in this year and do, do another session of the year of, of this. Um, but I was t- telling you guys also that one of, one of my goals going forward is to scale back a little bit to some degree try to find ways to yeah do the things you love but also you know strike a balance and i had said to you guys um about three weeks ago that i had put the football's awesome podcast under a radar um as you know we did that show last year um you you know and we had a good time with that of course it was mikey b and kyle nash doing the game 
you know, and then of course uh, Zach the Degenerate. And we did this. And we did the show. We had a good time doing it last year. But also, what I, I revealed in the last podcast, what you guys didn't know was that I did have a sense of burnout at the time. So in trying, in lieu of trying to figure out a strike on the balance and trying to find things to do in a way where it's not, you know, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying doing it, but not making that feel like it's a chore. I had said that I had discussed considering, or considered rather, um, not bringing back that show for another year. You know, the consider just you know, not doing that show and it's kind of a uh, whatever. But, you know, come back down and be away for a couple of weeks, you know, oh, well, about, about a week, whatever. Um, it made me think about a lot of things that maybe the balance I need to start doing is not necessarily with the shows, but more so with how I handle things in general. And talking to my wife uh, last uh, last week about about this, she said, "You know, you know, you know, you love podcasting. This is something. This is therapy for you. This is something that you enjoy. So why would you do something less less than for something that's that's good for you? It makes no sense. Just figure out a way to make it happen, and balance everything else around that. So in talking to my wife about this, and being able to talk to her about the schedule this year and about the kids and whatnot, because the thing is now, as I said." One of the biggest, one of the big things this year for us is that we now we now have a kindergartner in the house, and which means now officially we have two kids in, in the same school, which means now double homework and double double the pressure, of you know of getting these these kids, you know attention and getting them in a straight and narrow. But she said, you know, you have the time to do this. You have the schedule. The people who support you to do this show with you, they've built their lives around this, to the show now to where they can do it in a way where it's not. You know, um, of as much pressure. You know, plus they do they're available the times you can do it for. So I sat there and her her give me clarity, and her tell me this, and called me an idiot for actually actually called me an idiot for not not even, you know, even considering shutting down the football podcast. I decided that I'm gonna bring it back another year. Um, I I just think that you know again, step away for a little bit, take a little break. Coming back, feeling fresh, feeling excited about football, feeling excited about the the formats and whatnot. And again, we do that show on Tuesdays anyway, and that's the day I have to myself for a good seven hours to record. You know, I know it's three to four segments. It's my segments. It's a bike segment, Kyle's and uh, and and Zach's segment in the show. But these segments are fairly easy. I mean, these these things are pretty much built in. You know, it's not a lot of work unless I do the show too. The most of the work, as I said before on the podcast, most of the work that that goes into the show is in post production. So if you, if I can find a way to be efficient in recording, be efficient in in post production, not feeling rushed, I can have my cake and eat it too. I can still have the balanced life. I can still have the shows I do. So we decided we're gonna bring it back another year. So the announcement, of course, is official. Football's awesome. We'll be back for another another season. Here's a big change, though. Here's a big change. Some, something I, I put some thought to thought into also too, as well. Because obviously, you know, when we started this 2022, we had started taking all my shows I had done, all my projects, and put on one feed. But to me, that became a little, little bit problematic because of space issues, because of other things. That's why I took off Take Three Wrestling off the off this feed, you know, a few months ago. And it has its own space. I feel that football's awesome is big enough and important enough now that it deserves its own space now too as well. Now, again, that show is mainly a seasonal show anyways. So so we're going to go week to week, obviously, from, you know, Labor Day week, you know, week one, all the way through Super Bowl. And then you saw the summer. We did a couple of shows during the summer, you know, maybe monthly or bi-monthly or whatever it may be. You know, we do a free agency show. We do a draft recap, and we do maybe, you know, a, 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 a special episode here and there. You know, but I think this show also deserves its own space, and I want this show to be the focus now of variety, guests, and just, you know, I, I, wanna, I want to, I want these shows to have their own space, if necessary. Football's awesome is a core group. Also, it's 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 four guys. It's myself. It's Mike. It's Kyle. It's Zach. You know, so. If you check now, if you look up right now on, on iTunes or, or Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, rather, or Spotify, should be up soon, you may find Football's Awesome um, as on feed. 
Um, so we're going to put it on the feed as well, too. In addition to that show, we're also going to put the uh, basketball show I did last year on the feed as well. So there you go. There's your announcement. Football's Awesome is back next year. I was on the podcast feed, and then when we bring back the uh, the basketball show, which was called In the Paint last year, but I'm, ch- I'm changing that. I'm changing that title. That's not, that, we're changing that title. I, I know, and I, I even told you guys, you know, during the show that we were going to change that title. I was not a fan of that title. I just did it. Be- I, I like the title. Let me just be clear. I like the title. The problem is that that title was so generic, and at the time when I decided to run with it. I didn't have much time really to play with and sort of put more thought into the title because we were, we were launching a show pretty much the, the next couple of days after we decided on it. But I did say that we were going to try to change up the uh, title of the show once we uh, get there. Um, I got a couple of ideas in mind, but I um, want to wait probably until next month to decide on the title for the show. But we'll let you guys keep you guys updated on that. But yes, football is awesome is back, and I'm pretty excited about it. Um, other than that, yes, yeah, so the basketball show is coming back there as well too. Um, like I said, we have the, we have the unfiltered show still too. Also, you know, we'll see if we continue to. We're gonna, we're probably going to try to update them as much as possible, but we'll see if we continue doing that. Um, other than that, um, like I said, this update to terms of the podcast, the overrunners podcast um, on NFL Runners, we're gonna, I'm actually recording that this Wednesday with Zach and Chris. Um, that will not be part of the Football's Awesome podcast. That's gonna be this show. Don't forget to stay on this part on this feed because it's something that we start on this feed. So that'll be separate from the other shows. Same with the NBA one as well too. We do when we do in uh, October. Um, other other media stuff here related to me. Uh, like I said, I'm part of the Hella Podcast. Tomorrow night, the 23rd of August, Tuesday night, we're back on live shows. Check it out. Of course, I'll be available there uh, tomorrow. Um, do we talk about college football and lean up to that, which I also said last week. I'm not as excited about it as I am in the NFL, but we'll see when the show gets here. We'll see how I feel about that. Um, I'm also doing a special episode with uh, with uh, Big Jim and his other, and his other podcast, his third podcast, uh, Discussion with Nobody. Um, we're supposed to do a uh, episode sometime in the next month or so um, discussing our our both our top 10 favorite Queen songs and ranking them. Not the best Queen songs. This is the best. This the ranking the, the songs that we like the most. That's coming sometime next month. Um, I know we we're discussing doing maybe doing early August, but I think the schedule is kind of tight. Maybe early September. We'll see what happens there. But that's coming up soon, though. So that and then other things. Like I said, this time of year for me in doing this kind of media, whether it's my my own stuff or becoming guests on own stuff too. Also, this is where it gets busy. Fall time. Football's back. College football's back. Next thing you know. NBA basketball is back. The Mets are in first place in the National League right now. National League East, anyway. Okay, so because of that, there's a lot going on right now, and I'm trying to, you know, I'm putting my foot, my two feet in again, despite scaling back, which I have been, which I'm going to do, scaling back. Now, this show, we may do one show a week, two shows a week, but we're going to figure things out to make, make, make sure we do it in an efficient manner. But I, I love doing this stuff. I, I really do. And I, why would I take away something that I truly enjoy which is this podcast or podcasting in general you know it is my therapy it, it is the thing that I have that I can do that's a release so anyway as I said football's back people ask me a lot, a lot of questions about, about my uh, my expectations and whatnot for the New York Giants I, mean, I know I'm a Giants fan of course and I know people you know the big gyms in the world the college national world you know ever tease me about you know, I'm a Cowboys fan, which he's no. I'm I am a New York football Giants fan, first and foremost. Okay? I've been a fan since nineteen ninety. <laughs> you know, I've I've gone through the Phil Sims era, Bill Parcells and Ray Hanley and uh, Dan Reeves and Jim Fossil, you name it. Tim Coff Tom Coughlin, of course. And I have very simple expectations for the Giants this year. You know, I am for the first time probably ever as a fan. I am not looking at a wins and loss this year for this team. I don't think they'll be good this year. I think they'll be a last place team this year in the, in the, in the NFC East. My only hope this year is that Daniel Jones, the quarterback Daniel Jones, gets better. That Daniel Jones shows that he can be the guy moving forward. I think this kid has a lot of talent. I think this kid has shown in moments that when he has an offensive line that actually is clicking for once, that he can make plays. He can throw the ball down the field. 
I'm not I'm not going to use last night's game against the Bengals in, in the preseason game as a, as, a, as an elixir because again, you know, you guys know how I feel about preseason football. I'm not the biggest fan of it. He looked good yesterday, but again, that's preseason football. But my sole expectations here are solely just about him, Daniel Jones, figuring it out. That's all. Hopefully he can show that he can be a solid quarterback. Am I asking me a top ten quarterback in the league right now? I have my my again, my my expectations for him are very, very simple. Just show that you can look the part. Just show that you can be a quarterback in this league. And he has mo- again, he's had moments where you can think you know, you can say, Oh, this is this, this kid has this kid has it. This kid, this, kid, this kid can do it. But at the same time, got put all together. This team, this team is a makeshift team. This, this is, this is, this is all we'll say to the Giants this year. I don't have any hope for them doing the playoffs this year. You know, even with a weak NFC, you'll be very top heavy all that. But what I will say is, I do like the synergy between the new GM, the new head coach, the quarterback. I feel like for the first time in a, a, a long time, probably since Eli got there, Eli Manning, that there seems to be a focused direction on where this team is going. I told you guys years back, I was not a fan of the Pat Shermer hire. I was not a fan of the, Bob, the, the Ben McAdoo hire. I was not a fan of the David Gelman hire as GM. Okay? I hated that Tom Coffin and him and, and, and the team parted ways. I hated it. and I just, But I understood why they did it. I totally understood why. But for the first time in a very long time, I'm actually legitimately excited about this team. But but excited in a different way. Not that I'm looking for wins and losses. Because even last year, I thought this team could actually make some noise. No, this is the first time I actually have, I have realistic expectations about the New York Giants and where they're going. We'll see how it goes. We'll see. With that, ooh, you guys heard that? That's that's, that's my my microphone. With that being said, let's return to our top top five. We we started doing you know months ago. I'm gonna bring it back here. And again, we're getting closer to the NFL season. Uh. Top five quarterbacks under most pressure. You know, mention Daniel Jones. I'm going to say right now, he's on the list because to me, it's simple. He does well, he has a job next year. He doesn't do well, he's done. So there's no pressure at this point. It's just him getting, a job, getting the damn job done. But that being said, here are my top five quarterbacks under the most pressure this year. Number five, I got Dak Prescott. He said, whoa, Dak Prescott, why? why? Because I, I feel like with Dak Prescott, and Dak Prescott is to me a top 12 quarterback in the league. He's really good. I'm, I'm I'm actually a fan of his. But I feel like there's an itch now from Cowboys fans that, okay, Dak, you're good. We get it. You're a real good, you're a good quarterback. You've been, you've been soft with this team for the last six years. What's next? What's next for Dak Prescott? I feel like a lot, a lot of Cowboys fans are very, how do you say, um, they're just, you know, anxious now. You know, they're a good team. You know, and it, and NFC right now, where it's just top heavy between the Rams and the Bucks and all that, there's space for the Cowboys to make a move here. The problem is, I don't think the Cowboys got any better this offseason. One can one can say they got worse. I would say this, that they are stalemate, but it's not good anyway. Which means you can still make the playoffs, but maybe we missed the, missed the, maybe you get the wild card. Maybe the Eagles can gain ground on you. Who knows? We'll figure out. Obviously, we'll discuss that on the over on this podcast. We record on Wednesday. But that press conference has press pressure to see if let's get to the next level. You know what I'm saying? So, number four, Aaron Rodgers. Similar reasons to that Prescott. Yes, Rodgers has a, has a Super Bowl championship. Of course, he won that 11 years ago. The Packers are always in the mix. But then you lose your top receiver, Devontae Adams. You know, and obviously he's on extension with the Packers. But for Rodgers, for people, per, and look, he may not give a crap about this, about perception about, of him, of him. obviously. He may not care, and that's fine. But there is still pressure for Rodgers here, okay? Because we talk about him as an all-time great, and he's all-time great. We talk about him as a top three guy all time. And I've said for years, I've bragged for years that Aaron Charles Rodgers is the most talented quarterback I've ever seen play football. But that does not translate into big wins. And you saw him last year in San Francisco in the playoffs. Meltdown. Didn't have a bad game, but he didn't he, 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 
He didn't lose a game for them for the Packers, but he sure as hell didn't win them for them either. So a lot of pressure on Aaron Rodgers this year. And number four. Number three, Josh Allen. Now, spoiler alert, I'm going to tell you right now. The Bills are my Super Bowl pick this year. Uh, Josh Allen, to me, it, it feels like the Bills right now, all the stars are aligning now for this team. You know, I think the top teams in the AFC, the Chiefs, all that, the Bengals, all good teams. I think the Chiefs took a step back this year. It just feels like the Bills right now. Everything is falling in place to the Bills right now for Josh Allen, which now applies pressure now for him. Josh Allen's on the, to me, it feels like Josh Allen is about to become the best quarterback in football this year. We'll see how that goes. But it falls on him. Can the Bills go to the next level? They should be in the Chiefs last year, obviously. We see what happened there. Made the AFC title game two years ago. The pressure is now is Josh Allen, Super Bowl or bust. This is really, to be honest with the Bills, a Super Bowl or bust year. Not saying they have to win the Super Bowl this year, but they got to damn sure got to get there now. Because even as good as the AFC is on paper, most people will tell you that the, the Bills are the favorite. Maybe not the clear cut favorite, but they're definitely one of the favorites. Oh, definitely the favorite. At least for me, they are favorite. Number two, Tua Tagovailoa. This is easy. The, the Dolphins have now littered that roster, especially on the offensive side of the ball, with weapons and speed. Tyreek Hill, you know, you know, Waddle, those guys. It's about Tua now. It's Tua bus now. Figure it out. This is the year. Like Daniel Jones, same thing with Tua. If Tua has even a good year, I might say a great year, have a good year, this is a playoff team next year, or this coming year. Okay? It all falls into Tua here at this point. The Dolphins have done their job and added weapons galore around him. Tua has to figure it out now. Number one for me, Carson Wentz. You say, why Carson Wentz? Because, again, he's getting another chance. I agree. He got, I agree to Colts and Jim Irsay panicked and let, him, and let him go and trade him last year. I agree. Carson Wentz had a good year last, last year, other than the last two games of the season. And Jim Irsay, Jim Irsay being the fake-ass Jerry Jones wannabe he'd been saying for years, decided to panic and, say, and get rid of Wentz. So what's, the way the Colts fell down the last two games of the year, someone had to pay. It was Carson Wentz. I already said my hot take for this offseason coming to the year was that the Washington Commanders, that the NFC East will be taking three teams to the playoffs. Washington included. Because of Carson Wentz. To me, it, this feels like Carson Wentz's last, real last chance to change the narrative, get back to the MVP season he had in 2017, and he can get back to the top 10 status. Because this guy was a top 10 quarterback in the league for a couple of years until the last couple, last few. But it's on Wentz now. And he has an opportunity to change a franchise that people forget are it's very storied, very troubled, very storied in the Washington football team, commanders, formerly Redskins, all that. He can change he can change a lot of fortunes there. But it's on him. So Dad Press number five, Aaron Rodgers number four, Josh Allen number three, uh two attack of Aloha, number two, and Carson Wentz number one. Quarterbacks under the most pressure entering this season. Speaking of quarterbacks and uh Pressure and not well, I don't worry about any pressure right now, anyway, for at least for, for the first you know three quarters of the year. Uh, Deshaun Watson um, is going to be out for 11 games and got to pay five million dollars. Um, so the, the NFL made the appeal, they came to an agreement 11 games out. So you, you can be, basically what, what that means to me is simple is that you can officially put the uh, Cleveland Browns out of play contention. I, I look, I like Jacoby Brissett, I think it's a solid quarterback. Um, I don't know if they should go after Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo. Maybe they should. I don't know. But, uh, you know, the AFC is tough this year. And I was thinking, you know, if, if Watson would have missed only the first six games, like that, that, was, that was originally was uh, recommended by the uh, the judge or whoever it was, then maybe the Browns could, you know, go, th- you know, maybe three and three at worst and then, you know, figure it out from there. But Lemon Games, uh, yeah, that's that's too much. Lemon Games, $5 million. I'm um, going back. Um, obviously, you know you you know my take on this whole st- story and situation. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna look at here now on this podcast. I've done it already quite a few times in the past. I'm just glad the story is is in the rear, at this point is going to be in the rearview mirror going forward. So I know people want to say, "Oh, you sound very insensitive," but honestly, 
I just don't care anymore, honestly. I just don't care. Well, you know, I'm just going to get move, move past it. So, I know it sounds harsh, but whatever. Uh, the NBA and NFL will be clashing on Christmas Day. So, normally the NBA is the promotion, the league, whatever, that dominates Christmas Day. NFL gets Thanksgiving. NBA gets, Thanks- gets Christmas. Not this year. This year, the NFL and NBA will be clashing. Um, obviously, the NBA does their regular five-game slate of, of basketball games, you know. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people, folks who are casual NBA fans always consider Christmas Day the the real start of the season. Although by then you're you're already two and a half months into the year. <laughs> of course, I don't consider that. I'm an NBA diehard anyway. However, um, the NFL will be scheduling three games that day um, on the schedule uh, on Christmas. So for me, it'd be exciting for me. Um, let me see the schedule here. So at noon, you're gonna have the Sixers and the Knicks start off the whole soiree. Then at one o'clock, the NFL will have the Packers and the Lo- and the Dolphins. Two thirty, you have the you have the Lakers and the Mavericks. That's Luka against LeBron. Four thirty, you can have the Rams and the Broncos. Five o'clock, you have the Celtics and the, and the Bucks. That's gonna be a huge game. Eight o'clock, you have the Warriors and the Grizzlies. Eight twenty is the Cardinals and the Bucks. Uh, Nuggets and Suns at ten thirty to close out the whole uh, soiree. Christmas Day sports schedule. Now. I don't ever argue that the NBA, the NFL is a bigger sport than the NFL than the NBA. No one's arguing that. The NFL has football means more than anything else. I, I may be an NBA diehard, but I also recognize that the NFL is is king shit here when it comes to this country in terms of what what, what people prioritize sports wise here in this country. Um, I'm curious though, like the, the NFL is going to take a few eyeballs for this one. The only thing I will say though is that. That may say the NBA here is that if these NFL if these NFL games actually will, will matter. In other words, will Packers and Dolphins be fighting for playoff position and whatnot? Will you know Rams and Broncos be? I mean, these are huge games here. You got you got Aaron Rodgers against two one and those weapons. You have Russ Wilson against Matthew Stafford. You're going to have uh, you know Brady against Kyle Murray. These are pretty big games. But will these teams be playing for something at that at the point of the year? Because I think I think at that point I, I believe that's week number sixteen. For the NFL season, I believe. Anyway, in any case, I got two, I got multiple teams in this house anyway. I'll have both games on at the same time. It's, it's more for me, you know, over saturation, whatever. And I think the Christmas is on the Sunday this year, so that's why why it's that way too. It is what it is. I'll enjoy. Uh, like I said, I've, what I've been also been enjoying so far. Um, I'm obviously great game yesterday against the Phillies. Took three three out of four. The Mets are rolling. I'm excited about tonight's game. Next two games, you got to be Subway Series tonight and tomorrow. You got Scherzer and the Grom and the Mound, also both games. And I was thinking about this too, but you know, all the sports teams I, I root for. You know, I've seen the Heat. You know, win three titles. You know, in my adulthood, I've seen the Giants win. You know, I was alive for all four Super Bowl championships, but the, th- the three on the back end. You know, two thousand, what, nineteen ninety, two thousand and uh, uh, seven, and two thousand eleven. I was obviously. You know, a, a young kid who watched it at the time, though, and then an adult for the Super Bowls on the, on the back end. You know, I saw the Rangers win a Stanley Cup in two thousand no, 1994. I was 14 years old. I was alive for the Mets World Series in 1986, but I was six years old. I, w- I could not comprehend the importance of the World Series at, at six years old, at least back then. I know my mom was a big fan back then. She went to the parade and all that. But I couldn't comprehend, you know, even as a, as a young kid, the importance of winning a championship like that. So it goes it goes to to to, to show that the I'm really invested in the Mets this year. I'm praying to God they win the World Series this year. Um and I, you know, what if they win the World Series this year? How will be my reaction? I already told my friends, you know, <laughs> it's embarrassing to sound to forty years old. If the, if the Mets win the World Series this year, I'm gonna cry like a little bitch. I'm gonna cry like a little baby. I really am. Because this is something I've been, you know, to be honest with you, of all the sports teams I root for, Heat, Giants, uh, Rangers, the Mets is the first one I invested into as a kid. I first got into baseball in 1988. You know, that's part of my reason I hate the Dodgers so much is because the 88 team that lost to the Dodgers in, in, in the NLCS, uh, I believe was better than the 86 team. So naturally, I just hate the Dodgers just because of that. It's not, it's, it's, it's not it's nonsensical, I get it, but it is what it is. So, a Mets World Series would be a big deal. We came, we got close 2015. We came close. That was a fantastic run. 
and then the Royals ruined it for me. <laughs> for me. I mean, we're doing this podcast. Remember, remember when they won NL, NL East? I, 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 I recorded an episode in September when they won NL East in Cincinnati when they first clinched it on a Saturday. And I recorded on this show, you know, this a quick 50-minute, like, reaction pod to the uh, the Mets win in the NL East. Not even thinking they could make it, make it to the World Series. You know, but then he beat the Dodgers in the NLDS, beat the uh, Cubs, and swept the Cubs, actually, in the NLCS, and then they lose in five to the, to the Royals. But, man, I'm, I'm I'm invested in this team now, man. I'm invested in this team this year. I, I, I really hope they uh, win the World Series this year. I, re- I really hope so. I don't I like if you ask me right now though unfortunately, like what is who are the favorites right now to win the win the uh oh to go to World Series in each league? I, I will still say Astros in the in American League and the Dodgers in the National League. The Dodgers is the Dodgers are just fucking good right now. The Dodgers are just fantastic right now. They can't they can't lose any games. You know, shout out to all the, all the guys on this on this podcast to come on, Mark Francois, you know, Jordan Bruce Carini, Steve Worstein, all those guys, big Dodger Dodger fans. You know, I get it. Darrell Wilson, of course. But you know, I I, it, it, I have the Dodgers and Astros winning it. But man, if the Mets can somehow pull this off, and again, this is a two-year window. You know, we're going on the Max Scherzer window. You know, we can also lose Jacob Degrom after the season. You know, so this is a two-year window now that Steve Cohen has put together here for his team. It's a fun team. I enjoy it. Lindor and and Alonzo and you know Nimmo and those guys. Connor had a two home run game yesterday against the Phillies, which I loved. Always fun beating the Phillies. Always fun dominating the Phillies. Two weekends in a row, taking three out of four. Two, two out of three last week, three out of four this week. Love it. But man, I would love to win a World Series. And it was so sick too, also, is that the Braves are on our, on our heels. The four games back right now as, as it's recording. The Braves have been playing fantastic baseball. Like the only hiccup the last month and a half has been that, that series lost, lost to us. Four out of five about two weeks ago. Other than that, they've been dominant, and the Braves are really good, and they scared the shit out of me. I'm sorry, and I'm still pessimistic that the Mets could close this deal out. But the four games up, got the Yankees next two days, next two days, and then they have the easiest schedule I think of the three teams battling out, or the two teams battling out for the National League between us and the Braves. Easy schedule going forward, but that doesn't matter. Just play your games, you know, the way you want to, the way the way you should, rather. And you should be able to, you know, I, I think it's so important for the Nets to, to also get, you know, the division title because you don't want to be wild card games and having to waste Max or the Grom, sure the Grom on on a wild card game. It's crucial to rotation. By you skipping over the wild card game by winning division, you don't have to worry about playing a wild card game. You, you can just you can you can do your rotation the way you should. So very important month and a half coming up for the Mets. Let's talk some wrestling before we get out of here. Um, and, you know, it's been about a, three weeks to a month now since Vince McMahon has left the, uh, left the um, WWE. Retired, should I say. Triple H taking over. Triple H is officially the head of creative there. And if you watch Raw, if you watch the first Raw since then, and you watch SummerSlam, you know, back in late July, and you watch Raw and SmackDown in the last couple of weeks, one thing is clear, and we're going to have our friend, you know, Duke Bennett on the podcast next week talking about this very topic Duke, from Duke, Duke Loves Wrestling for the record. It, it is clear so far that a month into the post-Vince world of the, of the WWE that Triple H has his footprint all over this thing. It's clear. He's getting NXT people involved, you know, bringing up Io Shirai and you know, Dakota Kai and you see Dexter Loomis involved now. He's pushing... Uh, Tommaso Ciampa now to to the U.S. title. Not there yet, but he's in the mix now. It's clear that Triple H, there's, there's an inflection point here. There's a freshening up of the product, especially, which I love. And I'm not saying Vince was, the, was bad, but Vince did get dated. Vince had a certain formula that he did things, how he booked certain things, certain guys he likes. And he stuck to that formula for 40 years. And it's worked for the most part all the way through. With Triple H, it feels like he's embracing the old, the new, and all in between. And look, this may stop or slow down at some point down the road. We'll see how they continue to book, how he continues to book. Uh, you know, these guys moving forward, these women moving forward. 
But I, I got to say, so far, a month into the Triple H run WWE, job well done. Job well done. I know my boy Duke likes to say that he's still new Coke. I get it. I don't know, man. I, I think Triple H is, is, is bringing something to the table so that's different and new. We'll see how he continues to book this. And even Duke was saying in his last podcast recently that, you know, he's done a job well done. I agree. Let's see how this continues, though, into, you know, the fall, into Mania season next year. How they book this, how they book Roman moving forward. Um, I hope I, I hope they, personally, I still want, I, I would like the company to, you know, stop the, the two brands. You know, the brand, the brand split. I, I like to end that, personally. That's my opinion, though. You know, I can see guys who are in AEW right now trying to, who have contracts, you know, about to expire, maybe making a, uh, making a, a little knock on the door and uh, trying to uh, come by, to come back to WWE or whatever. I can see that happening. AEW, maybe AEW would watch out. AEW's honeymoon's over. It's definitely over. You know, we 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 are we're one week one year into the CM into the CM Punk era, and things are you know if you believe the dirt teacher course, things are getting messy. Things get a little messy now in AEW. You know CM Punk in in the locker room, and he supposedly went unscripted on Last Dynamite and called out Hangman Page and whatnot. Just saying, I I think Tony Khan, you know, for his passion he's about his company and about about the medium. And loves pro wrestling. I think he's too, a little too friendly some of these guys. And I, th- and I think Tony Khan be very careful. The ratings are, you know, the ratings aren't bad, but they haven't grown. They're still getting 900,000 to a million a week. 900,000 being, being, being the, the normal. You know, CM Punk hasn't really moved the needle in the same way that you would have thought. Like, he's he's been good, you know, but I, I don't think he's been what they thought he'd be. You know, people thought, well, CM Punk being there... The ratings should go over to a million consistently, and then that's it. And million two, million three has done that. You know, now you're hearing about infighting and people be unrestless now. Obviously, the MJF thing is that still a shoot? Is that a work? We don't know. Uh, a lot of things going on there in the company. Uh, it's it's clear now that the AEW honeymoon's over. It's very clear. It's been clear for a little while, but even more so now. And uh, who knows? The TV deals up very soon with with, with with Turner next year. Um, ratings, you know, they from what I was, you know, listening to the Duke Rest podcast. Shout out to uh, Robert Burnett, also be on that pod. He uh, it mentioned that that Turner pays uh, AEW, you know, forty five million dollars a year to be on TV to put both their shows, both uh, Dynamite on Wednesdays and Rampage on Fridays. And Rampage has been a disaster on Fridays. Obviously, obviously, in my opinion, it's a bad. Slot anyway, 10, 10, 10 p.m. to watch wrestling, you know. But Turner's going, is going through, you know, Warner's going through their, all their accessories and trying to find a way to cut things. And they, they, they're supposed to be trying to cut a billion dollars worth of, of, of product. There's a chunk right there in AEW. Not saying it should happen. And I'm sure if, if Turner decides to uh, cut AEW from the deal, no, no, not, or not renew them, they'll find out the, the TV deal elsewhere. But I know all I'm saying here is the AEW honeymoon's over, and I don't know. I just think that uh, Tony Khan needs to tighten the ship up. He needs to, you know, book better. I still think his booking is kind of average at best. You know, he's only showing one women's match a week on Dynamite. Still, why not two? I understand that. So a lot of work in AEW, I, and I think WWE. You know, Vince. People, people, at AW, you know, AW fans were very happy, and Vince is, uh, you know, such ones who are anti WWE are very happy uh, that Vince was gone. Here is the problem: you just allowed WWE now, not allowed it, but you you now understand that WWE now has a chance now to fresh up the product now when it got at Triple H, and thus and thus steal back some of those those, those uh, fans that they lost because Vince was the problem in WWE. Mostly, only because he got stale. AW's in trouble. I'm, I'm talking about AW's in trouble. I think um, now it could be a couple of years we see this, you know, come fruition. But I don't know. AW to me, I, the honeymoon's definitely over. It's definitely over. So, and this podcast is already over because I'm tired and my voice is cracking. So again, I'm on Twitter at ej christian number seven. 
Urge Good Podcast, all our podcast catchers. Again, subscribe to Football is Awesome. Subscribe to the basketball. Well, I'll, I'll let you know the basketball show when it comes back. Subscribe, of course, to my wrestling podcast at Take 3 Wrestling. I'll be back on the show this week, this Thursday. Um, other than that, um, look out for the next episode on this, on this feed. This coming Wednesday. Dropping on Thursday or whatever. Until we finish it. And if over-unders, um, my favorite podcast of the year. Myself, the degenerate self, Zach, and the professor, Chris, Chris Manic, on the show. Looking forward to that. And uh, beyond that, that's about it. Love you guys. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Subscribe. Visit the YouTube page, Earth Speaking Media on YouTube, especially. Um, and until then, until next one, we love you guys. Take care and see ya.